Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure the network file system for Linux on a CentOS 7 machine. So I have a server here. The first thing we need to do with the server is make sure we have our, our directories that we want to export. And I want to export, um, I'm going to create a directory called share slash share. And I want to export that directory. I also want to export the home directory. So I create the directory. And then I go in, I edit the etc exports file. This file, we get to list um, all the exports and then who we are exporting to and what permissions we're using to export. So I'm going to export share. And I'm going to export it to everybody and do read write permissions. I'm also going to export the home directory. And I'm going to export that one to everybody and with read write permissions, just to get an idea of the things you can do. When these export, they will export using um, the UID of files and directories in there will be the UID of what they are on the server. So the client will see the same UID number for everything except for root. So you want to make sure you have your user ID numbers matching up on both sides. And you can do that with either LDAP or NIS or some other service like that. All right. So I now have my export stuff created. Um, I need to make sure I start my servers. So there are three servers tied to the uh, network file system that are important to make sure running. Now, some of these are already running, so you don't have to worry too much, but, um, so you wanna start the RPC bind. RPC bind makes this possible for, well, all the RPC room procedure things to run. Next, I'm gonna start the NFS server. Now, these two are probably already running. Uh, next, I'm going to start the NFS mount D service. This service makes it possible for client machines to figure out which machine, which directories are actually being exported. And if I want these to be there the next time I reboot my, my system, I'm going to also enable them. Find. server and mount D. All right, so now they've all been turned on. They've all been set to export. And um, now I need to worry about the firewall because the firewall will block people from connecting. And there are three firewall rules we can use. And we can set those up with a firewall CMD command, add, a service and we're going to use the RPC dash bind service add that one um, we're going to add the NFS service and we're also going to add the mount D service notice these names are not exactly the same as the service names so as the, the server services names if I want these rules to be permanent, I'm going to once again run the same command again, except with a dash dash permanent command. So this will put it in the firewall configuration file. And that will make it so that it is there the next time I restart my firewall. All right, so now the firewall is taken care of, the services are running. I want to make sure that all my directories are exporting properly, and I can do that with the export fs minus a command. So run that command, it exports directories. I can run export fs without the minus a option, and I can see what is being exported. So now I'm done on the server side. Next, I want to go to the client system. So you can see the server, 
jump to the client system, and I want to see which things are being exported. So I can type in the show mount minus E option, and then pass it the host name or IP address of my server. So this is server.example.com, I do show mount, and I can see there are two directories being exported. If I did not have the mount D command running, I would not be able to see these services being exported. So I need that running. All right, now I need to have a mount point on each on, on my system. So I already have a home directory on my system. And um, I'm going to create a directory for my share. So I will call that um, um, server share. So you can see that it's different. It doesn't really matter what you call the directory. So it's direct, it's mounted there. Now I'm going to manually mount the share. So you can see how you do it manually. So I do mount, I pass it. The device is the name of the server and the share. So it'd be server.example.com colon share. And it's going to, mount, going to be mounted in the mount place, the mount point of server share. I run that command. And then I can go look at that directory. Server share. And I can see nothing. Because there's nothing there. Now, one thing that might be confusing at first is if I go into that directory. And I try adding files. Um, so touch file tx, txt, it says permission denied. The reason is because the root user is being exported as nobody and mounted as nobody because they don't want any vulnerabilities to come up that have something to do with uh, the set UID bits or other things. And so everything is mapped over except for the root user. If I were to switch to a different user, I could create something. The other option I have is to go over to my server again. Here, I'm back in the server. I go to the shared directory. I can look around, see it's a nice directory. I can change the permissions of the directory to allow anybody to write in the directory. So if I did chmod 777 to the current directory, it doesn't like that. It highlights it, but then I want to go to the client machine and I try touching that same file. It creates it, and if you look in the directory, you can see that it created it as the NFS nobody user, and that's what root gets mapped to. A normal user on my system will get mapped to whatever their username is. All right, now I'm going to map the home directory. So I do mount server dot example com colon slash home to my home directory. <clears throat> now my home directory already had files in it so when I mount this over there it hides the my current home directory and it shows me just the server's home directory. If I switch into a user so my username is uh, Joseph that will be in Joseph's home directory and I can look around I can see stuff. And you can see that the it shows files in this directory as being owned by me. If I have a PWD, you can see I'm in this home directory. But this home directory is actually on the server. So if I touch something, touch file on client.txt, I can create the file. I created this file on client file. If I go to the server and look at my home directory, I can see there is a file on client file that was created. And the reason the names match up is because I have a Joseph user on both systems with the exact same UID number. If they were not matching, it would be different, um, different name. Once again, LDAP or NIS would be used for that. Now, if I want to make these um, permanent, I can go back over to my client machine. 
and I can go to my FS tab file system table file and I can add these devices in here. So you start with the device, then you add the mount point, then you tell the file system you're using, then you pass it any options, which uses defaults, and then I usually just pass it zero zero for um, file system check and things like that. So my device is once again server dot example dot com colon slash share and that is being mounted at the mount point of server share with an NFS type. I'm using defaults and zero zero. I could use other things um, to allow root to override things, but I'm not going to do that. Once again, server example dot com colon slash home mounting it to my home directory. It's an NFS. I'm using defaults again. Zero zero. And then I can exit out. Now that oh, I guess I should have logged in as the uh, root user exit out of the uh, a second. New. Exit out of my Joseph user. Back into root. Now I'm going to edit the file again. All right. Go down here and paste those two lines. Exit out of here. All right. Now that it's in the file system table, I can unmount and mount these directories by using either the device name or the directory name. So if I type in umount um, server share, it should, well, I guess I'm in the server share directory. Uh, it unmounts it. And if I want to remount it, I just type mount. Also, when I reboot my system, it will automatically mount these directories. So they're there and it will work. And that's it for doing network file system sharing.